Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevails. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the name of Jesus. You guys are exciting, right? You're happy to be in church? Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Robert from the fastest growing church in Milwaukee, Oregon. Amen. For those of you who are watching by internet, and for those of you that are here, just wanted to remind those people that if you are one of our partners with our ministry, you get to see a ton of awesome video teachings. Bible school teachings, for $25 per month, you get to watch over 60, 70 hours worth of video that will encourage you, that will help you become a minister of the Lord for our upcoming Holy Spirit conference in April. So you really need to be filled with God's word so you can be ministers. Amen? Amen. So we encourage you to get signed up. It's only $25 a month. And we change the password on the first of every month. So we are glad that you're going to be participating with us. Amen. How many are ready for today's sermon? Amen. We are going to preach to you an awesome message called God's Covenant Promise. Amen. How many, how many know what covenant promise is? And we're going to go through some of these and bring to you remembrance. And once all of a sudden you start understanding God's covenant promise, it will change the way you think in Jesus' name. So let's open up with prayer. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, and we'll go on. Father, we thank you for this amazing teaching that you're about to give to us. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus that you've given us the Lord Jesus, who gave himself for us. We exalt you, Lord Jesus, and we lift you high. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to be our teacher, to give us revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. All the people of God said, yes, yes. yes and amen and amen. So what is God's covenant with you personally? Do you know? And uh, I don't see any hands going up. So obviously we're going to teach you something so you can have a better understanding of God's covenant with you personally. A lot of us, you know, we, oh, yeah, God's got it. But what is it towards you personally? And this is amazing because we go through this teaching. It's going to open your eyes and you're going to start thinking a little bit differently, I hope, in Jesus' name. Because, you know, how many people have you ran through and go, you know, nobody loves me and I don't care. You, know, you forgot God's covenant. Oh, man, I don't have any. Yeah, you forgot God's covenant. Oh, gee, you, don't, you forgot God's covenant. So what is it with you? Why are you forgetting? Because you forgot. So we want to remind you that God wants you to know it. And when you have an understanding of the covenant, then you will have a whole lot more excitement in your life. Amen. So what is God's covenant with you? Let's talk about blood covenant. What is it? Blood covenant is a solemn agreement a solemn agreement between two parties in which there is a total commitment by each party sealed by the shedding of blood. So God is totally committed to you and you are supposed to be totally committed to God. Say amen. amen. All right. So that makes us fun, right? So I have a ton of scripture, so we're going to go quickly. Amen. So in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 15, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet, what happened here? Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Okay? So God's covenant is both sacred and binding. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. In Jeremiah chapter 34, verse 8 through 21, this is the word that came unto Jeremiah from the Lord. After that king of Zedekiah made a covenant with all the people which were at Jerusalem to proclaim liberty unto them, that every man should, be, should let his man, man's servant and every man his maidservant, being a Hebrew or Hebrewess, go free, that none should serve himself on them, to wit of a Jew his brother. Now, when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that everyone should 
let his manservant and everyone his maidservant go free, that none should serve themselves of them any more. Then they obeyed and let them go. But afterward they turned and caused the servant and the handmaids whom they had let go free to return and brought them into subjection for servants and for handmaids. Therefore the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondmen, saying, At the end of seven years let you go every man his brother a Hebrew, which has been sold unto thee. And when he hath served thee six years, thou shalt let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearken not unto me, neither incline their ear. And ye were now turned and had done right in my sight in proclaiming liberty every man to his neighbor. And you made a covenant before me in the house which is called by my name. <clears throat> but you turned and polluted my name and caused every man his servant and every man his handmaid, whom you had set at liberty at their pleasure, to return and brought them into subjection to be unto you for servants and for handmaids. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, you have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, to the sword, to the pestilence, and to the famine, and I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant, which have not performed the words of the covenant which they have made before me, when they cut the calf in twain and passed between the parts thereof. The princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs and the priests and all the people of the land which passed between the parts of the calf, I will even give them to the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them that seek their life. And their dead bodies shall be for meat unto the fowls of the heaven and to the beasts of the earth. And Zedekiah king of Judah and his princes will I give unto the hand of their enemies and to the hand of them that seek their life, and to the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which are gone up from you. Sounds like if you're going to make a covenant with the Lord, you better keep your promise. Say amen. amen. So the covenant is not only binding on those who make it, but on those who are represented. So King Zedekiah made the covenant, but the people didn't do what they were supposed to do because they were represented. So let's go on. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 14 and 15, Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us, this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. So look at me and everybody say, You weren't here on Wednesday? You don't know what we said about you. So because you're not here, even though the covenant's made, you're still responsible. That's what it's saying. Oh, my God, you better show up from now on and say, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Good things could be said about you, and you wouldn't know it. Praise the Lord. All right, so the covenant includes all of everyone's life, all of everyone's abilities and possessions. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath our mind. Therefore said I that he shall take a mine and shall show it unto you. Talk about covenant. Amen? Now, in Genesis chapter 17, verse 7, and it says, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So children are included in all covenant actions. Now, there's something I want to bring across to you in case you haven't figured this out. It says here, to be a God unto thee. What does that mean? That means that whatever you need, he will provide for you. I will be a God to you. So if you need money, you need healing, you need something, you need a car, you need a parking place, you need to buy Nina a gift, you need to buy something for Robert, God will be a God for you to make sure that it gets done. That's what it said. And to your seed after you. So it's for all your children. Say, thank you, Lord. 
Okay, God's promises are there. Let's look in Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him and keep His commandments to a thousand generations. Amen. So God's promises and conditions are from generation to generation. Isn't that good news? So how did God initiate the covenant? Let's find out. I mean, you're learning something today. Okay. In Galatians chapter 2, 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So God put us in Jesus when he died. Isn't that good news? Okay. Jesus was made sin for us, curse for our curse. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the what? Righteousness of God in him. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for his written curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So Jesus was made poor for our po poverty. In 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus was made sick for our sicknesses and diseases. Isaiah 53 verse 4, Surely he hath borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. So Jesus died to taste death for every person. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Amen? So the blood is the seal of the covenant. Amen? So the life is in the blood. In Leviticus 17 and verse 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make an atonement for the soul. And in verse 14, For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. So we know that the covenant is in the blood. So the benefits of being in a covenant relationship with God. How many like to know what your benefits are? All right. Safety is in the covenant. Revelations 12, verse 10 through 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. We also have favor with God. In John chapter 14, and verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's also trade in the covenant. In Luke chapter 10, I'll put in the wrong scripture, but that's okay. It's still a good word. And heal the sick that are therein, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you, but in whatsoever city you enter, they shall receive you not. Go your ways out of the streets of the same and say, Actually, I'm going to need to go to Luke chapter 16, which is not here. In Luke chapter 16, and we read in verse 9. 
And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you your trust true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So that's called trade. Okay? I got the wrong scriptures here. God sees you as a house or a family. Oh, that computer, get back to where I had you. Or a family unit. Well, stay there. <laughs> and it disappeared again. Stay there. Yeah. There we go. It's up to date. Thank you so much. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 18. God is always related in the Old Testament as a house or a person and his seed. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Amen? Amen. Now in Genesis 9, verse 9, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. You know, that's amazing. God says to Robert, Robert, I'm going to establish my covenant with you, plus all your children. And when you stop and think about that is deep. Wouldn't you say so? Okay. Let's show us where he established his covenant with Abram. In Genesis 15 and verse 18. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed... Have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates? Isn't that amazing? Not only to you, Abram, but to your seed. And if we stop and think about it, he's talking about all of us because we're his seed, seed of Abraham. He also established his covenant with Isaac. Let's look at that in Genesis 17, 19-21. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation." But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Even though God blessed him, he didn't give him a covenant. There's a change. There's a difference. I mean, we still have a little problem with those people today. They don't have the covenant. We do. Okay? In the New Testament, you and your house has to talk about basically Everybody in your family's name. Isn't that good news? In Acts chapter 11, verse 12 through 15. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Okay. who shall tell thee words, whereby thou shalt and all thy house shall be saved. Whereby thou and all thy house. He's not talking about the building. You all get that, okay? Shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. In Acts chapter 16, verse 29 to 34, Then he called for a light, 
and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Amen? And he took them in the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, and was baptized he and all his straightway. And when he brought them into his house, he sat meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And the best part is to be continued in Jesus' name. <laughs> We're going to pray. How many know that it gets going, don't you? You're just like, yeah. There's a lot that we've learned about God's covenant, and it's with us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this awesome message in Jesus' name. You've given us a covenant, and we appreciate it. It's made with us, our entire house, and our seed after us. And we give you all the praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the people of God said, yes, yes and amen and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you, you pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503 652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at rider.org. That's rider.org. And join us again next time for more of Rider Ministries with Pastor Robert Ryder.